Hello everyone. Today I'm going to discuss uh, some of the questions related to integration. One of the common questions which I, which very frequently I ask in the interview is like, how to, what will be your design approach to do the integration? Let's say that you have insurance ID, account number or something, okay, from the UI. Uh, when you're entering that, that value, and on click a button or something, you want to fetch something from external system. So I do not directly ask, okay, right, how you'll consume the REST API or something. Okay, instead of that, I ask that, okay, you have to enter something, okay, and then click on a button and populate the details on the work page. So in this way, this questions will cover end-to-end -end design, right? Like from uh, creating a data model at your work layer, and then uh, fetching the data from external system and then populating back to the work page. And most of the times people get confused or like give me like, I mean, sometimes they'll try to explain the integration. Sometimes they'll try to explain that they'll, uh, the UI part that they'll, they'll configure button, but I do not get that the proper answer, right? So I'll explain that how you can answer for this one, okay? So let's say, right, so as I said, right, on click of something, you want to, like after entering something, you want to populate the details, as I said, right, uh, you want to populate the account details or something. So the first things which you need to do is obviously you need to build a UI, okay, where you'll have some input details and on that input, maybe you'll have a button, okay, or if you want to display the information, then you can have a just uh, like the OTV submit button and the post, in the post actions or on the button, you should create a data transform, okay? And that data transform um, should call a data page, okay? So the data page will be calling an integration system, okay, or the external system. So, so before going there, okay, you need to explain that, yes, uh, like, so the first thing is that you'll have a data transform, then inside data transform, you'll be trying to invoke the external system using data page. Now to configure or consume any REST API, what all things you need, okay? So you need to explain this also. So the prerequisite to consume any API is, the first things which you need is that you need a request, you need the response structure, and you need the endpoint URL, okay? Even if you don't have that live live system, you can still get that the sample request and response and upload it, okay, uh, as a JSON while consuming the REST API through the wizard. Okay, if if you don't have the response and uh, if you have the request, you can make a live call also during that consumption and you can populate that. But you can upload the request uh, JSON and uh, request uh, and response JSON during consumption. So this is the three prerequisite you need. Okay, so. Obviously, like after getting these details from the other system, okay, you can consume that API, okay, and then uh, Pega gives an options to create a data layer, okay. If you want to consume all the attributes, you can maybe go ahead and create that. You can skip that part as well, okay. Not necessary that you have to create a data um, part. Okay, you can just have the integrations part. So what it will do, it will create an integrations layer and everything. It will create connect rest. Now you can create your uh, data page, okay, and the data which, page which I was talking, and then in the request response, either uh, you can do uh, using uh, the JSON mapping, or you can have your own, like, uh, the, the normal property, okay. If you have, let's say, there are so many properties required, then maybe you can go with the JSON mapping. In that way, you can just keep creating a lot of properties, okay. So now once you have plugged this data page, so let's go back again. So on click a button, you are calling a data transform. The data transform will be calling a data page. And inside the data page, you have configured a uh, connect rest. And in that you have a request and response, okay? And most important things which people miss to explain me here is that you need the data model inside your like applications layer as well. Okay, because as I said, right? This will populate the data from external system, right? Let's say when you're populating uh, account details, then it can have like account holders name, address and other details. So this will come from the external system, but you need to hold inside the PI work page. So you need a data model, like let's say uh, you can have one class account details, okay, data class, like 
your applications layer data and then account details and inside that you can have like uh, multiple structure let's say you have multiple uh, addresses or something so that can go as a tree structure but in in your py work piece there should be object called account details okay and that is pointing to data class so this you need to explain okay and and in the response data transform you need to make sure okay to map the details to this to this one to account details you can how you can do that okay so if you don't want to do it in the response data transform you can override that response data transform or you can create extension data transform in the response data transform okay and do it so that if you want to use that if you want to reuse the same services and give it to someone else uh, they can also use it okay but by just overriding so in this way you need to explain the whole things okay so let me again explain you that if i have to answer how i'll do that so the first things which i'll do is that i'll create a data model okay whatever the informations which i'm going to show on the ui okay so the first i'll create a data model as i explained that one account class and then one py one property object property in py work page which is pointed to the data class now this is done then i'll configure the ui part and have an input then i'll create a data transform okay which will invoke a data page now i'll go ahead and uh consume that api okay and for that as i explained you have you should have the request response and then endpoint url and inside the data page you need to configure that request response and and then connect uh, uh connect things okay and this data transform will take that account number or the insurance id as a parameter and that will go to that that parameter will go to the request data transform and in the response data transform you can map it okay as i explained if you you may have to create property or you can do using json mapping so that you can do so this is how you can explain the whole things okay for this this one okay and then like uh, on click of that it will populate the data okay now what if if you're getting an error right so if user is getting an error so in this kind of a scenario again you have to map that uh, the error okay you can create error data transform in the response and map it okay uh, and like in the data transform where you are calling this data page right you can get that value if you have error so in that one in the data transform where you are invoking the data page right you need to do some uh, kind of exception handling that what is the response code okay based on that uh, you can display the data if you are getting like 200 if not then you may have to display the error message to the user that let's say that account service or that insurance service is failing you can retry at a point of time so this is for exception handling okay so this is how you need to answer it okay so that's it for this one okay please let me know if you have any questions around this one uh, but this is a very frequently asked question and you should try to answer it in proper way thank you have a good day bye